Hi, I'm Femi O.K. and you're in the stream. The arrest of an Indian student has ignited a debate in the country about what's freedom of speech and what is sedition. You're about to hear from both sides. But first, let's check in with our digital producer, Malika Balau, to see what's going on online. Oh, well, you're right, Femi. Just like the protests that we're seeing on the streets, we're also seeing two very vocal sides online with competing hashtags. On one side, those who say students at JNU, that's the university at the center of the protest, are guilty of anti-nationalism. They're using shut down JNU and arrest the traitors. And they're up against student supporters who use hashtags save JNU and I stand with JNU. Now for those of you watching, wherever you are, we want you to use the hashtag AJStream to join the conversation. I'm Sandeep Roy. I'm a writer and journalist and I'm in the stream. JNU Student Union President Kanaya Kumar was arrested on charges of sedition earlier this month. He was taken into custody after an event marking the 2013 hanging of a Kashmiri separatist convicted of a terrorist attack on the Indian Parliament. In his speech, Kumar criticized the government and there were allegations that, I'm going to quote here, anti-India sloganeering took place. Now, during his court appearance, violence erupted both outside and inside the courthouse. Kumar's arrest has sparked protests and clashes across the country. Government leaders have vowed to punish what it calls anti-national activity, but critics say this is an assault on freedom of speech and argue dissent is being criminalised. Journalists covering the story have complained of intimidation and assault. Kumar is still in custody and today thousands marched on the streets of the capital, New Delhi. The issue has opened a polarizing debate in India. So today we're bringing that to the stream. And to help us do that, we have in Mumbai, Sanjay Jha. He's spokesperson for the Indian National Congress. In New Delhi, Shela Rashid Chora is vice president of the JNU Student Union. Tarun Vijay is a member of parliament with the ruling BJP. And Rakesh Sinha is director of the India Policy Foundation. It's good to have you here, everybody. Tarun, there seems to be an awful lot of protests going on, on around India right now, not just at JN University. What are people protesting about? It's like George Washington State University. There is a group which uh, abuses the American Marines and observes the death anniversary of the bombers of 9-11. How would America react to that? Exactly the same is happening in an otherwise a very reputed and uh, great university. Uh, few groups, fringe elements, they are observing the death anniversary of a traitor who attacked Indian Parliament and who was sentenced to death by the Supreme Court of India. These people who get their freedom from Constitution of India and Indian democracy abuse both to have their treason flowered in an otherwise a very good academic institution. That is the crux. Nobody is against the JNU. Nobody wants that any action should be taken against those students who are here for the academic purposes. I have a report published by the Congress government, and it says, Ministry of Home Affairs, anti-national activities of pro-Peking communists and their preparations for subversion and violence. They are the political ancestors of the present CPI-affiliated uh -huh. AISF, whose president is Kanaya. Let me they just... get the inspiration from the same working against India and supporting those who are working to break wow. up India. Taran, that, that is some allegation. Let me just check in with Shella. Shella, do you recognize this description of your university? Um, <laughs> I have to first laugh at the ignorance of the previous speaker. And uh, I would suggest that whenever BJP sends uh, spokespersons to media channels, they better be well informed. So the first thing is that uh, there was an event conducted by some students against the death, uh, you know, death penalty given to Afzal Guru, uh, who, as many others have pointed out, including the uh, including chief justices, uh, legal jurists, they have pointed out how his hanging was wrong. 
So let now, me just say, Shella, the Afsal guru was the Kashmiri separatist who was hanged in 2013. He was the person that we referenced at the very beginning of this show. So, Shella, because we have only so much time, uh, do you recognize this description of your university? No, not at all. No, not at all. Uh, what he, well, what these people were doing is they were having an event. Some people in that event raised a slogan, and it has been repeatedly clarified that it was not JNU students who raised that slogan. So the first thing. The second thing is that Jawaharlal Nehru University is the only, if I were to describe it, it's the only place in India which stands tall against commercialization of education where people can study for rupees 250 a semester which is very low, which uh, I mean, which is very low by any standard. It's almost nominal. And that money is where women have complete Indians. Not for and the please don't interrupt me. No, please don't interrupt who, me. Who are subverting the please ask this person, please ask this person not to interrupt me. Please ask this person this not person, to interrupt me. The hate in your where eyes women, and the acid in your tongue shows up. And women have complete freedom. To. And women have complete freedom in Jawaharlal Nehru University to go about without any fear, conduct politics, study in the library 24-7. And that's really what pricks them. And what pricks them is the JNU asks questions. When they instigate riots throughout the country, when they kill people in the name of beef, when they kill people in the name of interfaith marriage, it's whether then the JNU recognizes, the JNU uh, uh, raises their, its voice, and students raise their voice. And that is why this government is so damn irritated with students. That is why they arrested the order, arrest, they, they ordered the okay. arrest of so students in FTI. So we're, 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 we're getting this sense of, no, of on, JNU as, as a progressive yeah, university. Yeah. Finish your sentence because Rakesh wants to come in and we're having a debate right here. Finish your sentence, Shella. Yeah, the last thing I want to say before I move on is that uh, BJP is uh, obsessed as hell with wiping out any opposition and that is really what irritates them about JNU and that's why the crackdown. Rakesh, go ahead. Oh, I think there is a debate in this country. Yeah. Our debate has been dependent on the Western categories and Western philosophy, Western thought. For the first time, the debate has started on the, uh, the that is in, in context of the Indian tradition and culture. That 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 is pinching these people. These these are the people who support colonization of Indian mind. We are for decolonization of Indian minds. That's why they believe that India is a multicultural state. There are many, many, they believe that India is a multinational state. There are many nationalities. We believe that India is one state, one nation, one state. Because there is a fundamental difference which they don't understand. That European nationalism says that it is nationalism which produced the nations. We say it is a nation which produced the nationalism. So we don't have disagreement all over the country. The only thing is that the difference between government and the state. They, if they oppose Narendra Modi as a prime minister, if they oppose Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh as an uh, organization or ideology, there is nothing wrong. Mm. You see the Indian newspapers, there are a plethora of articles against RSS, Narendra Modi. Nobody is objecting. But if they, 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 they are opposing Indian nation and state, they say Pakistan, Jindabad. So how can a sovereign state tolerate a, a, a group Sena, of people don't think your who, party who, who is, who is sloganing against the enemy right state? To talk on patriotism and nationalism. No, it is not a question uh, right to talk. Uh, let me complete. Uh, here, sure. I, I, believe that, I, I believe that our uh, the basis of nationalism in India is cultural. Indian nationalism is not coercive. We, we are dialogue with anybody who is separatist in Kashmir or in Nagaland or any part of the nation. But someone unprovoked opposition of the Indian state can't be tolerated. Only thing in police is investigating whether those who raise slogans, these slogans are empty slogans or there is ideology, people, mind and money behind them. So every so nation... So Rakesh, there is someone online who agrees with you about the slogans. This is uh, someone whose tweet I'll read. Uh, he says this was separatist-funded slogans that were being used. And he gets pushed back online from other people who say, no, this is about the right of freedom of expression. And Jeff goes on to say that what he thinks happened is that the police escalated the developments. Uh, Sanjay, can you talk about what did happen after these protests uh, broke out? What role did the police play in that, in what this tweet is referencing? You know, I'm going to give you a quote, a quote which was made by a lawyer uh, and what I think is one of the biggest uh, 
ruffians and goons who is very close to the ruling establishment of the BJP and the RSS fraternity. And these are his exact words. We beat him up for three hours in police custody. Mark the words. We beat him up for three hours in police custody. He wet his pants. That is how much we thrashed him. This is the language being used in the world's most populous democracy and one that we all actually believe is a vibrant and an extremely in argumentative society. What you're witnessing in India today is a repressive state regime. To add to what I think Shaila said earlier, there is a very distinctive pattern, and the pattern is simple. Mr. The artists that Mr. Sinha, that the artists that Mr. Sinha represents on your channel right now. Sense. No, let is me finish. I didn't interrupt you. Sinha ji, I didn't interrupt you. I kept a grace, and no. I think that tolerance needs to be what manifested to for the global audience today. But anyway, I am going to be speaking till you at least hear me out, and thereafter we can get no, into the just, shouting just stuff. One question, just one question. But the truth of one the matter person, it, it, is that the RSS is in. in so Sanjay, Sanjay, and Rakesh, Sanjay and Rakesh, Rakesh, hold tight for a moment. Sanjay, Sanjay, just allow me to do this. Sanjay, we are talking to. We are talking to each other, not talking over each other. Sometimes that happens a little bit because that happens in real conversation. Sanjay, finish a sentence. Rakesh, ask your question. Sanjay first. Yeah. Yeah. The point I'm making is the RSS, which basically is the one that is running the entire Bharatiya Janata Party. I want to go on record on Al Jazeera and tell you that India's Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, is unfortunately a puppet in the hands of the RSS. The RSS makes the policies. Mr. Modi tries to execute them. All right. So if I explain that the RSS, yeah. and then you can help, you can help me out, guys. Is, 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 a, is a Hindu nationalist group. You correct me if you don't like that description. Rakesh, now ask the question. No, my question is that Sanjay. Aha, we waited so long for the question, and now we have a frozen Skype. Malika, take uh, advantage of that. Can I come in here? Shayla, I actually uh, want to. I, I want to throw. I, I, I want to throw a video comment at you. Uh, you. This is from Amrita. I hear you. I hear you speaking right now, but I want to get the voice of someone online in. She's speaking to us from New Delhi, and she sent us a video comment on what she thinks the atmosphere in India is like right now. Shayla, have a listen to Amrita. Protest in JNU is happening because the Indian government, in the name of nationalism, is imposing upon its people a homogenization of identity that is Hindutva. Now, it is difficult to work in a country like India because India is represented by a multiplicity of voices and the government has to recognize, respect, reach out to those voices and then only a resolution can be achieved. Shaila, can you talk about the homogenization that she says she sees? Uh, yes, it's actually pretty evident from what uh, the earlier speaker from BJP was also saying. He says it, it's one India, one culture, one language, one religion. That is what they are obsessed with. And uh, at the same time, they also have this very authoritarian obsession with one leader and, you know, one party. And they have uh, gone to great lengths to wipe out any... Uh, you know, any any traces of dissent or any traces of opposition. And here's the thing. Ever since uh, Narendra Modi has come to power, people are scared. People are scared of speaking. Many of them are aligning with power. Many of them are keeping quiet. And at that time, it's the JNU students who raised this voice. Now, here he said another thing. He said Pakistan Zindabad. They raised uh, Pakistan long live slogans. So first of all, it has been exposed that Z News was a channel which ran this doctored video. And one of the Z News producers, Vishwadeepak, I would really like to congratulate him. He has resigned from his job with a public resignation. So, Shaila, remember that, that many people are coming to this conversation for the very first are, are, time. Are, are, so, let me just help a little bit with a, with a little bit of a summary. Taran, I'm coming any, to you I, immediately. I, 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 yes, just give me a moment. Everybody, give me a moment. Remember, many people come to this story for the first time. India, you're way ahead of us on this. There was some video, some video that was used in order to arrest. Kumar, who is now waiting for a bail hearing. So that video was very controversial, and that video, uh, many are saying, was doctored by both sides of this debate. So, shall I'm just going to help summarize that just a little bit so that everybody understands where you're coming from. Uh, let me just allow Tarun to respond. Tarun, go ahead. I'm really shocked at how a person from JNU, this lady, who seems to be a very intelligent and has come to this program after doing some homework, 
and she's telling complete lies and she's tarnishing the image of his her own country before the international audience i have that pen drive with me i can show you how the student groups were shouting bharat ki barbadi tak jang karenge we will fight till india is destroyed is this a patriotic song for the republic day of india and she herself admitted in the first statement that they were students they were groups and i don't know who were they and they were shouting slogans against india what did she Tarun, do there's something that's confusing did she me to the Tarun, there's something that's confusing me with the story to if i if i may i can respond to that yes i can respond yes. to that yes. Allow me this. Tarun, Tarun VJ, MP for the BJP ruling party. Let me ask you this. I do not understand how sloganeering can get you in trouble in India. Can you explain what it is about sloganeering? It would be the, what would be the slogan that would get you in trouble? Like can you give us a slogan that, that would would get you arrested? For those who hate this country, that is the only issue. Can an educational institution be Can you give me an example put, of at, a slogan? Put at the mercy of those who hate India with acid in their tongue. Yeah, I hear is I would like to Tarun, I hear, lying. I hear the passion. I don't understand what the slogan would be that would get you into trouble. The, the issue is those who yeah, love their country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tarun, I want to Tarun, I, hear I want issue. to ask I don't you hear a slogan. Okay, oh, Sanjay, go ahead. Appalent. Sanjay. Yeah, yeah. You, you know my point is that since Mr. Vijay here who is a very seasoned politician is complaining about sloganeering let me give you a classic example you know there are people within mr tarun vijay's party the bjp who have celebrated the assassins of someone no less gandhi. than the father of the nation mahatma gandhi nathuram godse has been celebrated gandhi. by a bharatiya janata party let you me finish mr vijay as a bjp mla in goa like sanjay is a tarun i hear both sides of the debate at the same time simultaneously and i hear not a single word tarun give me a moment i will give you example everybody of how this is like indian tv in just a moment sanjay finish the sentence make a point in a sentence <laughs> go ahead there's a there's an there's an mp called sakshi maharaj from the bjp party who said that nathuram godse who killed mahatma gandhi ought to be celebrated as a patriot there's Never. a bjp lml from goa Never. who actually celebrated january 30th the day of mahatma gandhi's death what are we talking about the hindu mahasabha Never which is lied. so close to the bjp Never and the lied. rss has always talked about making Don't temples to honor nathuram all right time out for everybody Never. everybody just is take a pause everybody take a breath take a pause everybody including mp tarun vj okay Give me a moment. Malika, what did you want to say? Two sides of the debate here. It echoes the debate that we are hearing among our guests there. Uh this is Rajiv and he says that students raising slogans to destroy India is shameful and unfortunate. So you have that side of the debate. On the other side you have someone who disagrees with that. This is Deepak and Rakesh I'll pose this to you. Uh excuse me, Tarun I'll pose this to you. Deepak says this whole thing we're seeing is a classic case of mob hysteria manufactured by elements in the central government the ultra right organizations and the section of the, of the media but of course he's slightly pointing the finger at the bjp what do you make of that who person in the ruling party can ever oppose dissent dissent is the salt of our democracy without dissent without any kind of opposition to anything let a million voices of dissent flower in country we are the most free country on this planet but there is a difference between dissent and treason uh, well what here's the thing lady, uh, what this hmm. lady is saying is against her own country she she and sanjay both are tarnishing what exactly did i say that that is against my country sorry. Sorry. Own motherland before I'm an international sorry, audience you want, have got no right to dissent. issue certificates of dissent, nationalism on anybody on india let me remind you tarun vijay you have no right the people of india have not voted you to give a certificate of national identity this feels like a really good point gentlemen gentlemen you have no business to do that you don't have the right to take a breath oh okay hang on hang on i'm going to come in sanjay shala just give me a moment this is a really good time for me to ask for for a moment of silence just so i can tell you that what you've been experiencing here on the stream is indian tv light now indian tv 
has, has been a major player in this debate. I want to play you a little yeah. bit from, to give you a taste of this from a program called News Hour on Times Now. They had this debate and this is how they conducted it. Have a little listen to this. I am telling you that there is a huge constituency in JNU which, which clearly supports the Barbadi the image as they say of India by and who want to look at India as... For oh, I, I, I am not fact. targeting I, the child. I am I not targeting. Please don't, please don't, please don't go into generalization. The truth is, the truth is that you know, I stay on facts for like one minute. Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Just, one, second, one second, one second, one second, one second. I've been watching this shallow debate for a long time tonight, and I know that there are people there who have not done a shred of journalism in their lives. So, uh, that's just a little sample of how this debate has been conducted in the media in India. Malika. There are people online who really agree with that and are so upset with it. This is Philip. He says in Indian media, it has become the judge, the jury, and the prosecutor. This is a brand new reality TV show that people follow. Another person, Dr. Vasta, says while it was a media-generated controversy from a doctored video, we've already addressed that, he says there were very few sensible journalists that remained unbiased. Sanjay, your view on that? Well, I can tell you that uh, there are certain sections of the Indian media that have conducted themselves shamefully, and I think have actually brought disrepute to the fourth estate. Because if they play a doctored video, which is being used as evidence against an unsuspecting citizen of India, no matter what allegations have been made against him, that is also a criminal conspiracy, and that is also an act of spreading public disorder and you know intimidation and violence. And I think they must be taken to task. I think end of day, it is an irresponsible. I'm not saying large sections of Indian media have done an excellent job. I think they're liberal, they're progressive, they fight for the right reasons. But there are certain sections that I think have been extremely, and I want to use a strong word, disgraceful. Let me just remind you that Shella is, is a... On the JNU walls. What about the posters that have been pasted on the JNU walls which say Can that we have to support those who are demanding ajadi? Ajadi of what? And they were very, very uh, disrespectful to the Indian soldiers. They beat up Indian soldiers in 19, uh, in 2010, and they celebrated the killing oh, of come Indian on. soldiers oh, come on. Don't bring the, oh, come on. Uh, by the Maoists in Bastar. So they have that oh, this kind is of all, uh, This is all those uh, who stand Alice against the soldiers okay, so, so and those who celebrate the death of Indian Shala, soldiers. Stick to the issue. Okay. Shala, Shala, we're we're the almost issue. out of time in this they part of the program. How do you get out? Of, how do you get out of this situation? Because do you not still have protests yeah, happening on, on the university simplify. campus? How, how do you get out of this? Hang on, let me simplify. See, listen, let me simplify this debate for you. Yeah. This is not really about the slogans. Let's get this straight, okay? Even ABVP on that day was shouting Azadi slogans, saying that from these people we want oh, Azadi, you you're know, lying. hinting at you're us. Lying. And, don't know, please. You're not a genuine student. I am. Please, sh please shut up and please let me I'm talk, an okay? Citizen. This is not. And genuine No, no, in please India. let me talk. All right, and we have there. The we, we're we running out of time. Please don't interrupt. Oh, Ta Tarun, just, just give me a pause. This isn't really about the slogans. This isn't about the slogans. They it's always wanted the to shut down JNU. Oh, they always wanted to Tarun, destroy JNU. I hate JNU. to bring a People fader down. I will do it if I have to, but I don't need to do it. Please just give we, me a moment. We were, Shella, finish your sentence. We're almost at the end of this show. Finish yes, your sentence. We Make were, a point. When we were having a movement, when we were leading a movement for restoration of fellowships, which the BJP government they took away, the BJP government took away the research fellowships, and we were having a three-month-long agitation out, outside the University Grants Commission. Called The movement was called Occupy UGC. At that time, the RSS mouthpiece came up with an article saying JNU is anti-national. What were the slogans raised at that time? Mm. This is really, this is just, a, you know, this is an excuse. They always wanted to destroy JNU because they have this anxiety. This is what they did in Hyderabad Central University. Their MPs, they jump in. Let me bring out a few examples. Okay, my, we're taking the examples point. to the post show because we're hang right on, at the end on. of this show. No, you'll have to That's hang on the, because we're going example. online. Shella. Hold on a moment. Malika, if, if people take anything from this debate, the takeaway is people are really angry. What do you have? Very angry on both sides of this debate. Okay. All right. We're going online. There was more conversation from my guests at stream.outazero.com. Thanks for watching. See you online.
You've been watching the last half hour or so. We've been talking about free speech, or is it sedition in India? We're debating, debating that on the stream with our guests. But let me start with Malika and what people are saying online. People are asking where the government is on this, especially the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a question we got from Samir on Twitter who says, Prime Minister Modi's silence on this issue clearly underscores his tactical support to what he says. This is Samir's uh, words. Persecution and witch hunt of students. Another person, this is John, who mentions Gujarat, he says Prime Minister Modi is keeping the tradition of being silent, which he did in 2002 in the state of Gujarat, which, which saw riots when he was uh, the minister of that state. Uh, so Sanjay, when you see tweets like these, do you feel similarly? Do you feel like there's been leadership on this issue? Absolutely. I think there's been a complete and a dismal uh, political leadership being manifested here. I mean, just think about it. The prime minister tweets on the most innocuous, uh, you know, things that happen in the country. Some time ago, they won a few, you know, limited by-elections, and he tweeted about it. And here you have right under your nose in New Delhi, a citizen, a young boy. You know, Indians talk about the demographic dividend in Davos, and this is the big India story, which is going to change the global hemisphere. You know, we're going to be the fastest growing country in far faster than even China. It's true. But you know, if, if the prime minister is going to ignore the lives of citizens of this country, the young, the vulnerable, people who actually are you know, fighting to be part of the big India dream, I, I think it's, it's a shocking uh, you know, abdication of responsibility. Don't forget that the police that arrested Kanhaya Kumar reports to Rajnath Singh, who happens to be India's home minister. This is not a state. This is reporting to the center. So to believe that India's home minister is not keeping the prime minister posted on what are the developments, I think if it is not happening, I think we, we are in a, we are really truly, uh, you know, what a lot of people are saying, a banana republic. I think it's about time we bit the bullet. There are serious question marks on the way this government is running. People are questioning, are we a democratically elected dictatorship? That there is a form of censorship that is coming. That end of day, there are defamation suits on people who criticize the government. There are all kinds of, you know, what I call as uh, using the, you know, the velvet, uh, you know, the, the actually the fist that has a velvet, but actually is a hard iron fist within. And that, I think, is a dangerous development in what is actually meant to be a quintessential democracy. Tarun? Uh, may I add to it the point that I was making? Uh, uh, hello? Can I say something on it? Yeah, Shishal, I, I will come back to you. It's just that there was a direct uh, question about um, your prime minister, and I, I'm interested in Tarun actually um, taking that on. And then, Shala, we'll come right back to you after that. Go ahead, Tarun. I'm not surprised why India was subjugated by the foreign invaders in the previous time. It was because of people like Sanjay and that lady. They work against their go. own country. There, there and they turn into country pillars by telling lies, telling lies. Uh, I mean, on there it the goes stream. again. There it goes again. Indian Prime Minister, you know, Mr. Vijay, with India. you have no and, right. And this, you can't have your dissent. Republic. It's obvious to anybody. It means the judiciary of India is a banana republic's judiciary. He must trust the judiciary. We are talking the about your government, my dear sir. Don't try to distort. That so Sanjay, must have Tarun, listen, Tarun did listen to you, so please listen to his response. Protect and shield the traitors. It's like shielding those bombers of 9-11 by some American groups. India can never tolerate this. We stand with the students. We stand with the academics of JNU. We respect JNU, but those who are working against their own motherland have to be taken care of by the Indian law and the Indian judiciary. Indian judiciary is very, very independent, and the magistrate who sent to remand that person who was caught uh, for working against the country, he may come out innocent if judiciary finds that he has done nothing, like the SSP of Pathan court. But there should be a trust in Indian judiciary and Indian investigating agencies. I have that this pen drive. And I can show you that how <laughs> the students that grew up were shouting against India. It is nothing that they can harm India. We are very strong, but it shows their character and their mentality that they live in this country, but they work against this country. It's a fight between those who love their country and okay. who hold those. Ta Tarun, who I, I hear you. Let me, just, let me just bring Shella. Shella, uh, I, uh, what, I, what I'm confused by, and I'd love you to address this, why are you shouting against your country? Why would that be a crime? It's just 
shouting. Femi, can you please allow me some time to speak because I don't think I've had adequate time to speak. It, Every it, time I speak, this gentleman just has to... Shall I? I don't think you're wasting your time tell it, talking about time to speak. Go no, ahead. you have to ensure that I get time I to will speak. Just go, go ahead, otherwise we're going to wrap up the show. Shall I? Shall I? Uh, you go ahead. You should not be so hateful for your own countrymen. Tarun. There he goes again. Thank you very much. Shall I? Go ahead. So this person has just said that he respects JNU. First, let me uh, try. Uh, let me bring out some examples of how they respect JNU. Uh, their, uh, you know, the, their MLAs and their MPs, their party leaders. What they have been saying is, JNU women are worse than prostitutes. JNU women Wrong. use three thousand a day. You are lying. You are lying. Nobody said that. Uh, there he goes again. No, so please really? listen to me. You don't shout me out, okay? Can you not tolerate a woman speaking? Is that what your real anxiety is? That in JNU women can get elected in the students' union and women can lead political protests? Is that what really your anxiety is? Look at the statements of your leaders. What are they really uh, saying? That JNU women are worse than prostitutes. Look at the hatred that your people, you're the ones who instigate hate in the name of love, jihad, and in the name of beef. So please don't give me that green and please don't interrupt me again. These people are repeatedly saying that, they, you know, some people were shouting. Who are these people who were shouting the slogans? These people, we have repeatedly said, were not JNU students. But, but the ABVP, which is the student wing of RSS, what are the slogans that they shout? I'll give you an example. Some years back, there was a controversy over this thing. But uh, when we were uh, sh uh, shouting slogans against rapists in a particular area, and these people said, I mean, these people said in return, yes, let's give the rapists one more chance. So it goes like this, when we were saying, Jabwa ke rapisto ko, and uh, the ABP people said, ek moka or do, give them another chance. Do we say that they should go to jail for insulting the modesty of a woman? No, we don't. And these people, the ABP raises slogans to the effect that, which basically means that you, uh, you know, uh, which basically talks about bloodshed and about bullets, about, uh, uh, oh you know, uh, uh, basically shouting, shooting bullets at people. And we don't say that they should be in jail for uh, attempt to murder because here's the thing, here's the legal point. Even if we condemn some slogans, which the union has done, which all the left organizations have done, we have condemned those slogans. But it is one thing to condemn the slogans. It's quite another to demand that people be put in jail for that. Because if people have to be put in jail for that, then ABP people first have to be put in jail for abetting that slogan in favor of rapists, for abetting slogans in favor of murder and in favor of bloodshed. So please, let's not try to make this about slogans. This isn't really about slogans. And these people, why do they keep bringing this up about nationalism, nationalism, nationalism? They are trying to hide the shame of not having participated in the freedom struggle. Because these are the people who killed Gandhi. These are the people who were absent from the freedom struggle. And if anyone has taken an anti-imperialist stance, it is the left. It is Bhagat Singh. It is the left which has always taken an imperialist stand. And while these people were busy it. seeking apologies, and busy aligning with power, busy aligning with global monetary organizations as they are doing okay, now. Shala, right now, take a pause. You were spying for the British. You were put behind bars by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru for supporting China. I, uh, 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 I, yes, I you, your left is people. No. Right. They were against we're taking a pause, everybody, they were because this conversation. British, and Pandit yes. Jawaharlal Nehru put 400 communist leaders behind yes. bars in 1962. Just take a pause for a moment because the conversation is with our online audience as well, and they would like to chat to you. Malika. Well, Sheila, you mentioned going back to the heart of uh, the protest and why students were uh, protesting in the first place. And this tweet from Andal made me think of that. He says, I think the important question is what caused this whole crisis? And that was free thinking Indian youth starting to question the Indian authority over Kashmir and the rights right, violations therein. And he goes on to say the Indian establishment has no room for this kind of dissent. So briefly, looking forward, because that, of course, could be a whole other show, Shayla, mm -hmm. what effect do you think that this conversation and these protests will have on the issue of Kashmir? Uh, see, definitely the kind of mob frenzy and the kind of media frenzy that has been whipped up around this, it will have a negative impact. And in fact, that is precisely the reason why we condemned those slogans. And not only condemned, uh, when I was present there, we actually tried to get them to stop the slogans. And I, as I said, because they were not JNU students, we did not know who these people were, we could not get them to stop those slogans. Now, the point is not that because these slogans are going to get someone uh, into jail. I mean, that is a clear misuse of power that the BJP government is doing. It was their MP. Mahesh Giri who wrote to the police that the FIR should be filed. The problem was not the FIR. The problem was that this kind of slogan actually does more harm to the, you know, Kashmir cause than it does, uh, uh, you know, the, we, we want to get maximum people to uh, unite and speak about the human rights violations in Kashmir, speak about 
Armed Forces Special Powers Act. I don't expect the BJP people to, ex you know, understand this point because they are going on about their own own thing of nationalism, nationalism. But uh, yes, we did condemn these slogans because we do a principled politics in JNU. And today, the entire student community and the teaching fraternity, everyone stands united. And the only isolated people are the ABVP people, which is the student wing of the RSS. And many people from ABVP are resigning. They are tendering their resignation because they believe that what the ABVP did in this was wrong. And at the same time, the media channels that were used to whip up this frenzy like Z News, people from Z News are resigning now. They are saying that we destroyed lives by playing doctored videos. And uh, that, that's the whole thing. All right, so guests, yeah, I am going to take advantage of this mission. pause to say thank you so much for bringing your take on what's happening right now in India around JNU. It's been a fascinating conversation. You brought passion and you helped us understand it a little bit better. Sanjay, Shela, Tarun, thank you for being part of the stream. Take care, everybody.